Well, everyone, once again, Mike Gold, speaking on behalf of Shabu Joe's University of Missouri, uh, graduate education in agroforestry, and interdisciplinary online certificate. It, it, might, it might be helpful to leave the door just yes. so that people can come. So they can wander in. If they don't, they don't. Cool. Online certificate and master's degree program. Mike? Okay. So, um, University of Missouri put out a challenge across campus uh, about 2009 because, like all universities who were all doing similar things, we wanted to know if they could build up more online undergrad and graduate programs. And uh, the director of the Center for Agroforestry, Shabu Joes, who is a very can-do guy, said, sure, we, we can create an online agriculture program, let's do it. So he put in a proposal to the university. The university liked it and, and, and supported us to do that. We are now the only online graduate program currently existing in the whole College of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources. So uh, it's both an online certificate and a master's degree program. And so the question we had when we created the program was, if we built it, would people actually enroll or not? You know, we didn't know. Our sense from being in the field for a long time is that they would, um, but we weren't sure. So, uh, reasons, the general reasons that, that institutions want to provide cost-effective education and campus resources in all states are getting more and more limited. We also know that there's lots of professionals looking for graduate degrees or certification programs in agroforestry. Lots of Peace Corps volunteers, return Peace Corps volunteers, or people who are going to go into Peace Corps are interested in agroforestry. And really a major thing is, is that traditional graduate programs are very, very limited for folks who don't live in that town. And if you have a full-time job, you really don't have the time to go in the middle of the day and sit in a class. So they're geographically and time limited. So we thought that creating a web-based MS degree and graduate certificate would address that audience in particular. And we also looked around and we saw no other online programs, even online courses, let alone online programs in agroforestry. So we have three, there's three different options. You can be in the online program and you can do a thesis master's if you wish. You can be in the online program and do a non-thesis program, same 30 credit hours, uh, and you have a, a, a special project, and then if you take the four core courses, you will get a graduate certificate. So if you do the master's, the graduate certificate comes along for the ride. Everybody's talked about agroforestry and what it's all about, and linking ecology, social dimensions, economic and market dimensions. This is the current curriculum, courses that are sort of in red, the kickoff course, which I teach, Ecological Principles, Agroforestry for Watershed Restoration, Agroforestry Economics and Policy. Those are the four core courses for the graduate certificate. And then you can pick and choose among these others. And you can also bring in at least six credits from a graduate training from other institutions because most of these folks, if not all, are not on campus. Okay. You can be on campus. These courses, some of them are hybrid, taught face-to-face -face and virtually. My course is now taught only virtually. So even for students that are at MU, they take my course virtually, but of course they can come and visit me and we can talk in more depth. So these are called asynchronous courses, which means they're there 24-7. They are normal. They follow a normal semester, week one to week 15, plus during finals week, whether you have a test or a paper. So they do follow the academic calendar, and they go both in, in the fall semester, the spring semester, and the summertime. Uh, the website for the Mizzou Online, which coordinates all the online programs, tracks hits. So the program launched here in early 2011. You can see we've had steady interest in hits, probably averaging about 10 per month people making inquiries into the program. And then the program um, has really started to grow. So we got first enrollment in the fall of 2001. And as of the fall of 2015, we have about 35 students enrolled either in a grad certificate, some just for that, or for the online master's program. 
And this just gives you some quick sample profiles of and what people do. So Bachelor of Science, District Forester in Kansas, PhD, high school math teacher at a private school, BS, Director of the Global Development Program for ICRAF in Nairobi, Kenya, bachelor's degree, who's currently a program development specialist on an NGO in Kashmir, India, um, master's in public health and an executive director of his own nonprofit, um, bachelor's of science, utility forester in Texas, bachelor of science, agroforestry specialist in a USDA project in Afghanistan, middle school teacher, lawyer, uh, Stephen talked about the urban food forest, he's in Kansas City, um, park ranger from Baltimore, National Park Service from D.C., and harborist from Ames, agroforestry specialist, I guess he's there twice, and uh, middle school teacher from Denver, and he's there twice too, because Shabu sent me these slides, so I didn't have quality control. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. So here's a couple of the projects they did. This is Stab Rhodes from Kansas, and he decided to do a thesis project, research survey barriers to adoption of riparian buffers in Kansas, and he had a lot of uptake with that. And the nice thing is, is that this, the project or thesis is uh, tailored to exactly what you need for your career. So if you want to become more of an expert or you have questions that you need to address that relate to agroforestry in your work, that can become your graduate program because we want this program to really, just like agroforestry practices are tailored to fit the landowner, this program is tailored to fit the needs of the students. Almost all of them are full-time employed, as you can see, doing this on the side. So most folks take a course per semester. You could finish this in two years, but it means you have to take two courses in fall, spring, and one in summer in the first year, and then again, two courses in fall, spring, and the final the final project in summer, so you could finish in two years. Most folks just find that with work, uh, and there's a fair amount of reading. This is graduate level work. They, they take a bit longer. Here's another student who worked with Craig Elovich, and they produced a guide, uh, Food Producing Agroforestry Landscapes in the Pacific, and this was Craig Elovich and Darian Bailing, and that was, that was his project. So that was really cool. We don't know why. With the project. Early on, we were concerned. We wanted to compare face-to-face -face and online courses. And uh, basically, they're about equal or the online students. Maybe that's, this was me, so maybe I'm a lousy face-to-face -face teacher. But I did as well or better teaching online as I did face-to-face. -face. One nice thing about online, all of my uh, my lectures are recorded in something called Tangerty, but they're broken into 15-minute vignettes. So throughout the week, I might have three to eight little sections. You can listen to them at any time. You can go back, God forbid, or listen to any piece of it. But the, but the point is, is that everything that I want to get out there is there. And when I was in the classroom, you know, engaging with students, getting off the topic sometimes, you get to the end of the classroom and I didn't get there. And so my approach was typically just to go on to the next topic the next week rather than get end up three or four behind. So it's more thorough this way, actually, because I'm able to put out everything that I want. Um, so, you know, we compared for a whole bunch of different evaluation criteria. The red bars are online. So you can see certainly there was no failure. This didn't lead us to believe that we were not going to be able to deliver a quality product. Um, so just to wrap this up, uh, as we had hoped that folks full-time, U.S. and abroad, found our program valuable. Um, they like this flexibility. Our university has really stepped up to the plate. So these, are co these cost in-state tuition, which is nice. Um, because it's an accredited university, you can also get regular student loans for the program because it's nice. Um, and, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. So, so far, so good. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to hear. 10 minutes. Have you had uh, international students uh, mind? We have, um, we've had, well, we have uh, one student from Canada. We have one student who's urban forester based out of London. And we have the head of communications for ICREF in Nairobi is in the program. So we have three, you know, um, and then uh, everybody else is basically coast to coast. Coast to coast. So.
and as you can see, every, every, you know, anywhere from BS to PhD, and every kind of background you can imagine, math teacher, uh, some people have, and if you apply, and I wouldn't apply to this group, but some people, for example, say, well, I studied French literature, but I'm really interested. So we'll say, well, you know, there's a lot of biophysical stuff here, so before you apply, take, if you can get it, an agroecology course and a soils course, and be, be re ready to do extra background work as you go, because look, this is, you're jumping into something where there is an assumption that you have background. So we will accept people, on kind of a conditional basis, and hopefully, you know, we do a good enough job that they can stick with it. There have been a couple of folks, like uh, I had a rural sociology PhD based on campus, enrolled in my course, and after five weeks he bailed. He just said, "I it's too much stuff I don't get." So, you know, uh, undergrads can also take this. It's open at the undergrad level. Most undergrads, after a week or two over the first couple of years had bailed because there's a lot of reading. It's not, you know, it's not multiple choice, you know, reading three pages a week. So when I see an undergrad enrolled out, I send them the previous semester syllabus and I say, you're very, very welcome, but this is what we're going to do. And most of them just go, <laughs> but not all of them, not all of them. So I'm happy to have them as long as they know. And now I know to communicate with them ahead of time. I don't have that issue with you know, mature working professionals. They're there, they want to be there, and they put the work in. And uh, people seem to be pretty satisfied. Um, there was a few people here. I don't know if you guys met him. You met Donna Davis, who's a uh, Fort State Forester in Southeast Colorado. And she took my course last semester, and she seemed real positive about it. So I felt good about that, because she's, you know, well into her career. And this is providing her with new ideas and new ways to think about, you know, doing her job a little bit. Well, I, I didn't quite uh, understand the uh, terminology in there where you have a master's degree and graduate certificate. Uh, the a terminology, different, a different, uh, the terminology of master's degree and graduate certificate, yes. So a graduate certificate just requires a person to take what I identified in red as the four core courses in agroforestry. And if you just take those, you can enroll just for that and you actually will get a graduate certificate actual credential in agroforestry from the University of Missouri, separate. And some people, it just is right, they want to learn and they want that much. They don't want to bite anymore because it fits. And they, and they need to be able to have something that they can officially show people that I have some expertise. And then if you go all the way to the 30 credit and do the special project or the thesis, okay, you get the grad certificate plus. And th there's appeal to both. Some people are just in the certificate program. Some people actually say, I think I'm going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to like dip my foot in the water, start with the 12 credits. If it's really good, I'm going to keep going. Is it possible for a uh, someone with an associate degree to be able to proceed with this? You need a bachelor's degree as well. So it's a requirement. The BSA yes. Uh, degree is yes. Yes, a requirement. And we ask people to take the GRE as well, even though people Ooh. don't like to. <laughs> now, <laughs> if, you have, if you already have a master's degree or a PhD, we understand that. And there have been a couple of cases now where we've said, nah, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> but for undergrads, we, we will require the GRE. It doesn't matter if you've got 30 years of life experience, we're still going to ask you to do that. Oh, you get an advisor yeah. to work with, or? Yes, so you have a, you'll get a full committee. So I'm advising a number of students, and then uh, there are at least two others. One, it, a minimum, a minimum of one of those other two is is outside of forestry. So uh, yeah, you have a you have a full real graduate. Hey, you, if, hang on, Kate. Hey. Um, you mentioned the example of Donna, but do you do much keeping track of what people do with either master's or either certificates, or like how it applies to the different jobs they're doing? I know it's hard to follow people on. No, we're, maybe, we're but. just we so we we've, we've graduated four now. Okay. And so we're just at the point now where we're going to want to start tracking with folks and finding out how it's been useful <laughs> as they go forward mm -hmm. in the career. So it's, for some people, it's like if you're in forestry or if you're in NRCS, it's really easy for me to envision that you can apply this directly. But some people actually 
have dreams of going into their own agroforestry business. And they're, and they're, they're like, I'm teaching math in eighth grade, and I've always done farming on the side, and I really, I'm gonna use this as a vehicle for me to change my career path. And that's what some people have expressed as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Is everyone self-funded or private grants, or do people ever get funded through their employer or through an organization? Some people get some funding from, it depends on their employers and whether some people have a requirement to attain a master's degree to continue in their profession, mm -hmm. so that's possible. Um, we don't have assistantships for people in the online program. The only thing that the university has done is if you are a military veteran, they're now taking 10% off the top on the tuition as a, as a way to help folks uh, succeed. But the fact that it's in-state tuition is helpful. Right. It means it's, you know, I, I looked, for example, about 15 years ago at, at MBA programs when I started to think about getting involved in marketing agroforestry products. And at that time, like Colorado State MBA was like $48,000. Holy mackerel. And so, you know, so ours is like 11 or 12. It's not cheap, but on a relative basis, it's not, it's not a kill. Yes. Yeah, so when I did my undergrad, it was in a wildland fire program, and it was new and novel like this. And, and now there there's over half a dozen universities that had a similar program, and they're also accredited by a, by a professional society. So I'm asking you if if this is if your long-term version is uh, as a niche program or something that can be replicated mm -hmm. oh, and well, possibly accredited. Um, so the question is, do we look at this as, as a, like a one-off program, or it could be accredited and others could do it? We would have no problem if other universities can do it. The, the difficulty is. With shrinking resources, it's, most universities can barely keep their own disciplines going with faculty hires because of shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. So we're in this unusual position to sit in a center for agroforestry where we have resources to enable a whole number of folks to focus on agroforestry. My disciplinary home is forestry, but I teach agroforestry, and I do. That's what this is all I do. I don't do forestry, and I'm not expected. Um, we are in dialogue with folks at the National Agroforestry Center and USDA and the Agronomy Society of America because we'd like to create an official certified agroforester credential. There's a, there is a certified horticulturalist, there's a professional forestry credential, there's a certified crop advisor credential. We would like to stand up an official certified agroforestry credential and over time if somebody acquired that, then they would have you know that same understanding that they have a real solid understanding of what they're doing. Yeah, Mike, when a, an international student uh, enrolls in this uh, program, uh, do you require this student to come over for a public final exam, or does it treat just online? It can be all online. Now they they can do that. Certainly, they're welcome to do that. Um, but literally, this, there are people who have not, did not come to campus. We interact with them, we'll Skype with them, we conference call with them. Mm -hmm. But if the student wants to come for the final exam, master of the exam, uh, is that allowable? Sure, that's allowable. I don't know that we would be able to fund the trip, but <laughs> we would welcome them to do so. For sure. Well, for at least he sees the University of Missouri. <laughs> when somebody, I graduated from the University. Oh, well, you know that's what I Oh, it would be really. <laughs> nice. I don't know that. I never saw that. <laughs> well, that's the nature of the, the program. But I think it's great if people do come. Um, yeah, I think to get it going. It's. I mean, well, we don't want to put that burden on people to have to come. There are there are programs that that do go in. I'm trying to think of the term. I just saw this in some things I was involved with where there's very little, but there is some required campus time. And it might be that that with this maturing, we would start to, to have that happen. It would be kind of nice if people would come for a week or something. Yeah. Something like our, our Agroforestry Academy yeah. to bring in. Um, I, 
uh, I agree with that. Because, you know, I think, uh, especially uh, an international uh, student trying to come to the U.S., it's very difficult to get a visa. But if there's a strong justification coming yeah. from the University yeah. of Zara, uh, here we go, oh, I'm going to take my final no, exam. Well, we would write those letters. We would have no problem helping. Or send it to the U.S. Embassy. We would have no problem <laughs> helping. Because that makes perfect sense. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yes? What um, kinds of publicity have you done? How do you publicize it? Well, the university has its own major entity called the Zoo Online that is the the portal for all online programs in the entire university. So when somebody contacts them, they there's at least three back and forth between the zoo online and them. And, and uh, then they send us a, a list after that. That's how we have that monthly, how many of them have contacted us. Um, and so then we can follow up. And then a lot of people just are emailing us directly to find out. Um, and we're promoting this at the kind of events that we go to. SAF meetings, Moses meetings, you know, SARE conferences, whatever, whatever, wherever we think there's a, uh, some logical. I went to the Permaculture Voices One conference in Southern California a couple years ago, brought that there, and I thought I'd get any up, but I felt there might be some. So that's how, that's pretty much how, how we're doing it. Is it possible, Mike, for a, uh, a faculty member from another university to serve as the advisor of a graduate student in anthropology online? I think we can do that. Uh, because, for instance, uh, these guys interested in the riparian buffer and uh, um, their the expertise may be somewhere else. Yes. And yeah, so, so, the out, so the outside person could be Dick Schultz from Iowa State. Absolutely. I don't think we have any That's problem with that. So I can do that. Yeah. You know, I, I have to check, but I'm almost sure we can do that. Sure. Then I think you should have published uh, uh, sort of a catalog faculty uh, for agroforestry at the University of Missouri. Then you have these uh, other people from other areas, a job or whatever you call it. And so you we have did actually uh, uh, we do have we do have some of that on our website right now. Right. Right. The adjunct faculty, I think Schultz is probably on that list. Right. Thanks, Mike. Okay.